Hi, I am Cardinal Dr. Elizabeth Samantha Rothschild Judge. Now let's say Governor Dr. Elizabeth Samantha Rothschild Judge, Governor Incumbent of the Federal Estate of Washington, D.C. I want to make a statement. So we know about all of the um, stalking and harassment that I've dealt with over the years and how it started up even in Washington, D.C. And how people were following me, even though I said, don't do that. Don't follow me around. You know, don't come here. I said that they did it anyway, right? So I kept working and I have a lot of things going on, property acquisitions and other things in business, a lot of things in ministries, in ministry. Okay, so I'm noticing that, you know, first of all, people are upset because I won't let them pretend like they're here with me. I don't live in the land of make-believe. This is not Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. This is the Federal Estate of Washington, D.C. There is no land of make-believe here. Everything is real world. So I just, I was wondering, because I only had one question about it, because I can't control other people's free will. If a person wants to be filthy, then the Bible tells me to just let them be filthy still. But I had a question. These little gatherings that they've had um, to uh, sharpen their steely knives, so say, so to speak, um, and I'm specifically speaking about the problem at the, that I've had at the shelter with people following me around. When at these meetings did they put together their resumes or fill out applications so they could get jobs? Because number one, I'm going to be assuming authority over Catholic charities. So a lot of things are going to change about the shelter. And persons that have those sorts of tendencies belong in either prison or the halfway houses, not in a homeless shelter. Because the people at the homeless shelter that are staff, the employees, they're there to help persons gain permanent housing and give them a place to stay in the meantime. Those that aren't ready, they help prepare them for their housing so that they can get them in uh, for stability. All right. So persons that are counterproductive will not even be able to be there once I go in and set the regulations and codes properly, okay? So that's uh, in the future and what is to come. And then as well, I'm not too, too far, however far be it, from being sworn in. Which means those persons, although they didn't go to jail, they got to get the hell out of my estate. There is no such thing as slavery in America anymore. We have abolished that institution. And so persons just laying around trying to live off of me, meaning the governor of the estate, live off of the estate, without being productive, well, they got to go. And although they didn't go to jail for their criminal stalking and the harassment that they initiated and carried on, I know that they did. And with that being said, they've got to go anyway. And I'm just wondering, what did they plan for themselves for the future? Because I've, you know, I've got all these things going and I'm planning my next steps, my new agendas for everything that I'm doing. And the only thing they're planning is who's going to watch the internet to see if I posted anything. And when I do post, who's going to cross my path or follow me around just because it's irritating to me to see them stalking me without being officially reprimanded by law enforcement. Well, I mean, you know, if they're trying to mock law enforcement, I say, why don't you tell them what you're doing? Because if you don't tell them and you're being subliminal, how can anyone really know? You know, so the setups, when they go into their little uh, gatherings with their steely knives to stab and kill the beast, me being the beast, right? Because I, right. Um, I'm wondering, have they productively planned where they will live and how they will gain the livelihood to afford their cost of living? 
because just living at the shelters in Washington, D.C., just to be there without any plans or any hopes, without any fortitude for what's to come next is not going to happen. That is illegal. Did you know that that is a form of slavery? And I'll not provide to the institution of slavery. So, yes, um, there are persons that are listed that I've promised them. I'm going to make sure that you are stabilized and you don't have to worry about anything. But there's a group, and all of them know that I don't know them in that way to want to provide for them. And they've ruined their chances of me looking into their situations to see if I could do anything. And this is from my personal wealth as the uh, chief executive officer of Corporate Law and Securities Incorporated, where I have all of this money in my capital account. So I can't justify giving them anything because they are not productive. And in their idleness, all they do is commit criminal activity, simple assaults, verbal assault, criminal stalking, harassment, public nuisances, disturbing the peace, disorderly conduct, uh, civil disobedience. You know, they're enemies to society. So this little group of persons who were pretending and refused to listen to reason because I tried to reason with them all. And they refused to listen to reason and they continued to do their little bitty newsome things, uh, such as like, you know, I'm, I'm doing laundry and I leave my laundry in the dryer. And so one of them, she used to go in and put holes in my clothes. And I'm like, oh gosh, this is really just too much. So, um, like I said, there are some persons that don't have to worry because I'm going to do something for them. And then there are some who aren't going to get anything. Okay. And those who aren't, hey, oh, we're not speaking today. That's all right. That's all right. You know, whole sound. Okay, so um, those that aren't getting anything are, um, it's like they, someone help me because they need to be planning for what they're going to do next. The homeless shelters are not drug rehabilitation units, and they are not um, your safe havens for illegals. What they are are, pla are places for persons facing hardship, financial distress to get back on their feet, and those who could not otherwise figure out how to afford their cost of living and gain stable housing to have the assistance to do that. So those persons, that little group, and many persons in the public have witnessed this behavior firsthand. They've seen it. It's been under investigation and observation. So I'm just wondering, what are they going to do? I'm not giving them a job with me. I, I mean, the criminal background check, I've already got all the information that I need. I, you know, I've, I'm the, been the victim or the target of their activities. And so... Um, just saying, while they're in their groups planning on who's going to pass by and walk by, who's going to look to see if I posted something so they can start walking by, who's going to follow me and everything. And they know better than to do that because I've been very verbose about it on the Internet and in my local environment to the point to where they're like fighting me. One person hit me in the head with a brick. So after I whooped her ass she still continues her activity. And I'm just wondering where is she and the rest of them and their little group, where are they gonna live when I become governor because they can't stay here? I'm just wondering if anybody can help get the answer to that for me, or like what are they gonna do for livelihood? Because when I assume full authority of Catholic Charities, the policy is gonna be enforced because we're into helping people, not into enabling freeloaders. All right, that's all I wanted to say. That's my rant and tangent. You all have a great day.